Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be answering a question from one of our subscribers. His name is Mark. He asked, could I make a video on how to set up the Ethernet IP address just using the keypad on a Commander C300 drive? So that's exactly what we're going to dive into today. And if you have any topics you would like me to cover, feel free to drop your request in the comment section or use the link I've provided in the description below. I'm always open to hearing your ideas. Without further ado, let's get started. So in this video, we're going to be showing how to set up the Ethernet IP address on an option module for the uh, Commander C300. This also works with the Commander C200 and the Unidrive M200 and the Unidrive M300. So this is what the Ethernet module looks like. In the front, there are two Ethernet ports. And there are also two little LEDs for each of the ports to let you know which port's talking. On the back side is the communication bus between the module and the drive. On the top here is a button that helps you release the module, right? So if you need to remove the module, you'll end up pushing it. And that's about all there is to this module. Now, before we can put it in the drive, we have to remove the cover. To do that, you need a small screwdriver. And there's this little turny thing here. It's not actually a screw. It's just like a eighth of a turn type screw. So you just turn it and then you slide the cover down. Okay. And then this just pops right off. We'll set that right to the side. Now on the option module, you would think you would just be able to put it in, but you can't. There's this little green thing that's in the way to protect the communication boss for those that are not using any option modules. So to remove that, on the right side, there's a little hole here and you stick a screwdriver in it and it just releases the, the little cover, okay? Now you can clearly see the communication bus is right there and we can simply just put this in. Now, if this drive was a bigger drive, uh, you would also need to make sure that this little tab slid into the drive and then you would rock it into position. But on the small drive like this, you just push it in, okay? So now it's snapped in. Again, if I wanted to remove it, there's this little button here. So I can remove it, All right? Snap it in. Now on the smaller drives, because you can't use the little black tab at the bottom to hold the module in, the cover here um, helps support the module. So we need to put the cover back in place. So we just rest it there. And we don't need the screwdriver at this point. We just push the thing closed. Okay. Now I'm going to turn on the power. When you first power the drive up and the option module wasn't in there, you're going to get an error. Now this error states that it is a slot different. That's all it's saying. Of course, the slot is different. This drive has one slot and that's what the option module is in. So we're just going to hit the red button, which we're going to use to reset the drive. Now, before we go further, let me describe each of the buttons so that we have a common name for each of the buttons. So the top button there, I'm going to refer to it as the exit button. This button here is going to be the enter button. This button here is the down button. This button is the up button. The green button we're not going to use, but it's typically a go button. And the red button is a stop and also reset button. Now you're going to notice on this drive, it keeps flashing PLC. That's because this drive has been used for other things in the past. And there's a little PLC program running. Your drive will not show PLC. Now, the first thing we need to know is that the, the settings that we're going to program all live inside the Ethernet module. They don't live inside the drive. And because of that, um, we need to navigate the keypad to the Ethernet module that lives in slot one. To do that, we need to hit the enter button one time. And you're going to see the keypad says PR 
10. This is parameter 10. Now on the front of the drive, you'll notice that there are 10 parameters listed here. These are the most commonly uh, used parameters for the basic drive when you're not using an Ethernet module or anything else. Okay, but we are actually going to need to get to some advanced parameters. And so this last parameter here, which is parameter 10, is called parameter access. I don't know that you can see it on this video, but that's what this bottom thing here is showing. So we're going to change the value of this. So we're going to hit the enter button. And now it's showing me the value of parameter 10. Okay, so I want to change this from level one to all. So I'm going to hit the enter button again. Now you can see the value is blinking. That means I can now edit the value. So I'm going to hit the up arrow a couple of times until it says all. Now we wanted to keep this setting of all. So we're going to hit the enter button again. Very good. Now if I hit the exit button, right, the escape button, we're back to parameter 10. However, you've probably noticed it doesn't say PR 10 anymore. That's because when we changed it to all, it now lets us get to all the menus inside of the drive. The first two zeros here are the menu number. And the last three digits here is the parameter number that lives with inside the menu. So right now we're in menu zero, looking at parameter 10. Now, the question is, how do we get to the slots? Well, what we do is we hit the escape button, hit the escape button again, and your drive may show a value of zero. Zero refers to all of the parameters inside the drive. If I push the up arrow with that one blinking, you will notice that it changes to a one. We are now in slot one. Now, this ethernet module is in slot one, so this is the correct value. Now where I want to go is menu two. To do that, I hit the enter button. You will see that the menu digits are now blinking. All I have to do is push the up arrow one time, and you'll see that we're in menu two of the ethernet module. Now inside of menu two, there are several parameters we need to set. So I'm going to hit enter again. And we're going to navigate to our first parameter, which is parameter five. Okay, parameter five is DHCP mode. So if I hit enter, I will be able to see the value of parameter five. I can see that DHCP mode is on. I don't want it to be on. I want it to be off. DHCP mode is used to automatically give the drive an IP address if you have a router or something that can do that. In our case, we don't want that. We want to tell the drive what the IP address is, so we are going to turn that off. So to change the value, I need that to blink. To make it blink, I hit the enter button. Now that it's blinking, I can change the value, and I'm going to hit the down arrow, and you can see now it's off. I'm going to hit the enter button again to keep the value. Very good. Now that I'm done changing the value, I'm going to hit the exit button to get back to the parameters. Okay, we are at parameter five. The next parameter we're going to go to is parameter six. So I'm going to hit the up arrow one time. This is the IP address. So I want to change the IP address, hit the enter button. Now you're going to see something interesting going on. The first thing you're going to see the digits keep changing. That is because this is a seven segment keypad and it doesn't have the ability to show you the full IP address. So in order for it to show you the IP address, there is a little dot at the top of the screen that you'll see going from left to right. That lets you know which part of the IP address the number represents. So this IP address that we have in the drive currently is 169.254.47.199. Now the IP address I want in the drive is 192.168.1.100. To do this, I need to make it so that I can edit these values. Now, 
what we're going to do is we're going to hit the enter button when that little square is on the first digit is in that first spot okay pushed it okay see how that little square is not changing locations anymore okay so now what that's telling me is we're changing the value for the very first octet of the IP address. Now I said I wanted this to be 192, so I'm gonna hit the up arrow. You can just hold it down. One nine two. I hit the enter button. And as you can see, the first octet is now one nine two. Okay, so now I'm gonna hit the enter button again when it gets onto the second location of my IP address and I want this to be 168. Very good. Hit the enter button. 192, 168. And I'm going to change this one to 1. And I wanted this to be 100. All right. So now we're going to check to make sure the IP address is in the module correctly. As we can see, it says 192, 168, 1, 100. Now we're going to hit the escape button. The next parameter we need to go to is parameter 7. Parameter 7 is the subnet. Okay. So I'm going to hit enter. And just like the IP address, it scrolls through each of the octets, showing you what the values are. And currently, the values are set up as 255, 255, 0, 0. Now this would probably work for me, but I want to change this to 255, 255, 255, 0. So again, just like the IP address, I wait until it gets to the part of the number I want to adjust, which is the third octet. I'm going to change this to 255. So I'm just going to hold this. Hit enter. Now if I hit back, I've now completely set up the IP address in the Ethernet module. However, the drive has not chosen to use this setting quite yet. And so what we need to do is tell the drive to use the new IP address. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to hit the exit button and go to slot 1, menu 0. So I'm going to hit the down arrow. And in menu 0, is where we have the ability to default the module, to restart the Ethernet module, and also look at what the IP address that the module is using right now. So I'm going to hit the Enter button. Okay, so I'm in slot 1, menu 0, and I'm going to go to parameter 10 just to see what IP address it's currently using. Oops, I went too far. Okay, so I'm on parameter 10. In menu 0, hit the Enter key. As you can see, it's using the old IP address that we had in there prior to us setting up the IP address. So what we need to do is tell it to use the new IP address. To do that, we hit the Escape button and go to parameter 7. Parameter 7 is the reinitialize or reset for this module. Basically, it reboots this module so that it uses the new settings. So I'm going to go to parameter 7 in menu 0, hit the Enter button. You'll see it says Off. I'm going to change it to On. And what's going to happen is the moment I turn it on, it's going to turn itself back off after it consumes the reset. So here's what I mean. I'm going to push up. Now watch for it. See, it consumed it, 
And then the moment it consumed it, it took us to a different parameter that, that says none. Now I'm going to hit escape just one time to show you where we're at. See, we're at param slot one, menu zero, parameter zero. Now parameter zero is pretty special. It has a bunch of little secret things we can do. So let's go back to here where it said none. Now what the drive tried to do is it said, hey, you just changed the IP address. You just reset the ethernet module. You probably want to save the IP address in the drive. And yes, indeed, we do want to save those settings. So it brought us here automatically. We want to change that none to save. Hit the enter button. And then the moment we hit the red button, it's going to consume this command save. Very good. The IP address has now been saved in the drive. Now, if we go back to our parameter 10, we can verify that it's using our new IP address. One nine two one six eight one one hundred. Yes, indeed, it is using our new IP address. So this is how you would set up the IP address using the keypad for the Ethernet module. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on further content. And remember, if there is a specific topic you would like me to cover, just let me know. I'm always open for suggestions.